And welcome back to What If. This What If comes from, I believe it's Eden Has Limits. Well, that's the question. What if Godzilla, last, now, a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago now, I did What If Godzilla Was in the Avatar Universe, and that seemed to be a pretty big hit. Now the question is, what if Godzilla were in the Dragon Ball Z universe? Now, there are different versions of Godzilla, so we have to take that in consideration. We would not use Godzilla Earth for obvious reasons, because Godzilla Earth kind of ter Godzilla terraformed the Earth and became part of the Earth at that point. So that would imply that Z-Fighters just sit and let that happen. That doesn't work that way. Although we could theoretically use Godzilla before that happened. Uh, but it's hard to gauge where that Godzilla stood in terms of power. But the thing is, is that unlike in the Avatar universe, where Godzilla clearly would have been one of the strongest forces in that world. If we look at the, some of the strongest versions of Godzilla here uh, in the Dragon Ball universe, he does not match up very strong uh, compared to... He, like, he is, Godzilla is not a universal level threat. Godzilla is usually a very... can usually be a, at least a planetary threat. And if you look at, say, uh, King uh, Godzilla Earth or some of the Heisei series, or the Millennium series, he definitely has above planetary levels of durability and power. So he could certainly be like a solar system destroyer, in theory. If you had something that had the equivalent mass of a solar system, he could theoretically destroy it. Because he destroyed singularities before. Or at least took them on. But the problem is, is that once you get to Dragon Ball Z, uh, you're getting, dealing with people who can blow up the planet with a finger. Uh, you're basically getting with n not just... Uh, planetary threats, but galactic threats, solar system threats, universal threats, multiversal threats. Godzilla doesn't stack up high on the uh, on the roster at that point. Add on to the fact that the, it all depends on which version that Godzilla is. Now, I used the legendary version in the Avatar video because that actually seemed to make the most sense. We're not dealing with an or not dealing with a lot of radiation, if any, in the uh, Avatar universe. In the sense of, you know, bombs or nuclear fallout that could create such a beast. So, that those versions didn't make sense. In this version, however, or this what if our there is, there are those things. Now, whether or not, we don't know the actual world history of Dragon Ball Z. That's the thing. It's not our Earth. It is Earth, but it's not our Earth. Our, like, World War One and Two most likely did not happen. Um... Uh, so, like, did they invent the atomic bomb? Did they invent things along those lines? We, the implication seems to be maybe they invented those. They definitely invented missiles. Like, we saw jet fighter stuff get torn apart by Napa. But I don't know if they invented nukes. Like, it doesn't look like they did. Otherwise, they would have tried to use them. Um, so... But we. that being said, we did see Jerome build the bomb in 17 that clearly had the power of a nuke. And several of them, quite frankly. It could actually maybe destroy the world. Uh, they said that's how powerful it was. So, yes and no. Um, but the, the qu point of getting at is, would there have been a scenario where other interpretations of Godzilla would have been created? And then when would they have been created? Would it have been before Goku's time? After Goku's time? When? I honestly see we the way we the the um interpretation that I get from Dragon Ball's universe is there hasn't been much in terms of true wars. You had a Red Ribbon Army, which was that, but there, the actual wars and stuff like that, because don't count Fusion Reborn. We saw Hitler come back from the dead. That doesn't count. That's not canon. Um, so I don't think we've seen much in the way of dropping nukes and stuff like that. We also don't, I also don't believe like the key and the key boss, like the Z fighters do give off radiation. So can't just argue, Hey, when cell nuked all these islands, the radiation fallout created Godzilla. No, he can't say that either. Uh, so as much as I don't want to just use legendary version of Godzilla again, I kind of have to, cause there's no actual logical way that I can tell that the other versions of Godzilla or show up now maybe someone who knows the Z dbz history could correct me on that maybe they have the cad nuclear fallout nuclear testing all that but i get the impression that there's a lot of i mean they still use like fossil fuels like gas and stuff but there's been thanks to like capsule corp and all that there's been a lot of advancements to, like clean energy all that hence like you can literally carry an entire building in a capsule like seriously like that's how that's a serious advancement in technology um so, unfortunately, the only Godzilla that does make sense to me to have is the Legendary version. So, if the Legendary version exists, what's its deal? Obviously, it's been around for millions of years, all that. Uh, 
I do see. So I don't think Godzilla really shows up that much until King Piccolo shows up because King Piccolo is literally a huge threat to the world. Like he's literally blowing cities off the grid, all that. So he shows up and I think while feeding off the earth world's radiation, obviously I think uh, because he can sense radiation, I think Godzilla in the DVZ world would likely be able to sense key and power levels to some degree. So he would find see where God, um, where um, Piccolo is, find or find where he is, track him down, and Piccolo would be like, uh, "What's this monster?" It's like, uh, it's like, isn't it one of yours, boss? Uh, or excuse me, isn't it one of yours, boss? I'm trying to do like peel off voice here. Mm, yes, isn't it one of yours? Oh, uh, yes, uh, I, I, it looks like something you would make. I did not make this monster. Did Kami make another dragon? Thinking maybe it's a new Shenron or something like that, and Godzilla's just looking at it and just roars it. See, oh, you challenged me, beast. Now, we do know animals can have power levels. Uh, they don't, they don't, aren't normally very high, but they can have power levels. I would have to imagine Godzilla's power level for an animal would actually be very high, seeing as it's a walking nuclear reactor. Uh, now, the question is, where do I put him? God's, from what we can tell, Legendary's Godzilla, even when being supercharged up with both a more atomic radiation and Mothra's energy, doesn't seem to really be a world destroyer, so I can't put him on Planet Buster level. But that doesn't mean I can't put him in a couple hundreds. Um, so maybe I would put him somewhere in, like, say, the low, like, maybe the 300 range. Because um, while, Piccolo, while Piccolo we saw was able to destroy a moon in DBZ, with his power being, roughly speaking, in the low 400s. Although we don't know if he had been doing any training at that point. He might have. Um, but... Um, Though, I doubt it. I think he was probably, like, in the low hundreds. Actually, he was technically only in the three hundreds. I might put... So, then I might put Godzilla maybe at, like, the 250 marker or something like that. Although, you could make the implication King Piccolo could destroy the planet. Um, but, either way... But who knows? Anyway, I'll put him at the, Godzilla at the 250. Although... I think you could see, like, build up temporary like Roshi does when he buffs up, when he's, like, charging, like, his atomic breath and his nuclear pulse. But, you know, King Piccolo, who also probably is capable of sensing energy at this point, does sense this creature is as powerful as a beast. Uh, beast, why do not fight? Join me. You, you, could, you would make a valuable servant. Godzilla just, like, I just snaps, it's like, very well, very well, creature. And he just, King Piccolo starts firing Godzilla, who, you know, can take nuclear blast to the face and absorb that. Now, Key isn't radiation, so he can't absorb that radiation, but he's taking these hits like a champ, pretty much. Because like, he's throwing a tail up, Pic Piccolo's able to dodge, just as, you know, Piccolo is able to go in for the final blast, Godzilla just fires off the nuclear atomic breath, and, you know, Piccolo dodges, but it hits this it hits the ship, and he actually ends up killing P off in the game. <laughs> I think that'd be hilarious. Um, it's like, oh, my ship! And unfortunately, because he, um, because he was looking at the ship exploding, you blasted and Godzilla just poo smacks him. Poo! Um, so Godzilla is now just beating the now just is starting to really tower over King Pit, like literally. Uh, because I mean it's like poof, uh, like that. Godzilla just roars, just come at. It got, and Pink, King Piccolo can sense his energy like charge up when he does that. Piccolo like fires the energy, but they collide. Piccolo is able to barely overpower the energy blast because different form of energy is still, it's radiation, but it's still in the form of a fire, whereas one's a form of a so it does hit Godzilla in the mouth. All of a sudden, though, Godzilla sends the energy, he's like, whoa, what are you? It's like, you, I killed you. It's like, and that's not quite. And then, you know, he's like, hey, big guys, are you okay? And because Godzilla, uh, Goku's actually pretty good with animals, even though he, you know, he hunted plenty of animals. He's also pretty good. Like, Godzilla's actually looking at it, it's like, he's like, going, he's like, what is this? Like, he's also not human. He's also really strong. Mm. He's he's looking at it, just, is it, hey, but don't worry, I got this. And so Godzilla kind of steps aside for a little bit, kind of, sh also to get his bearings, because he got hit, in the, he's a little, he's, he's punch drunk. He's a little dazed at the moment. Goku and uh, King Piccolo are duking out again. This time, however, it's going a lot better in Goku's favor because Godzilla has, you know, really uh, taken down uh, King Piccolo a notch, ultimately leading to Goku getting the win and also not being as badly injured as he was initially. 
So, you know, go, King Piccolo tosses out the egg, and you're all good. Godzilla and, you know, go kind of starts saying, Wow, thanks, you were, you helped me out a lot there. Thanks a lot there, buddy. I don't actually even know what your name is. And, like, and Godzilla just kind of looks at him, just, mm. And, you know, he walks away. It's like, oh, anyway, bye! And so Godzilla goes off into the sea and, you know, does his thing. So Goku eventually goes to train with Kami. Um, and Kami does, and he does ask us, like, what was that there? Is it much like, I am the protector of Earth, Goku, but even before my time, there, there have always been protectors. He's, he's the last of his kind, an ancient species that fed off the radiation of this planet. When nature is in balance, he comes to its aid. In ancient time, he was known as Godzilla. Wow, Godzilla, I hope to meet him again. He was really awesome, and he seemed really strong, too. Even even for us, uh, even for a creature. And by the way, Godzilla's power level could be leagues higher than what I'm making it out to be. Um, I just think because we know right now the Legendaries isn't technically a planet buster, I can't put it too high. Um, for obvious reasons. The durability-wise, he probably has the durability of a planet buster. Um, because he could take a hit and keep going. Uh, so, Godzilla, um, think words here. So, Godzilla's back and doing his thing. I think Goku maybe, uh, I don't think much really changes ultimately. Like, Piccolo's back, but he doesn't really, uh, I don't think Godzilla, Godzilla can now sense Goku's there. And he, cause he can remember, I'm sure he's ancient and wise enough to remember the feel of someone's specific power level. So he can feel that, you know, it's like, hey, even though it's my job to protect the earth, this guy's here now. I think I can leave it to him. <laughs> and I think that's the thing. Godzilla would kind of play the role of like an Icarus or something, or like a Kami or something. A wise old entity that sometimes might come into play that can help out in times of need. Um, so, really, like when Raditz comes, Godzilla can sense this thing is, this guy's powerful. Unfortunately, it, it surpasses Godzilla's power, but he should still try to help. Unfortunately, by the time he gets to the mainland, it's not, it's going to be too late, and he can sense Goku and Piccolo going to try to stop him. And ultimately, do. And, and that's the thing. Really, there isn't much that's going to change long term, except for that Goku didn't get as effed up against uh, King Piccolo as he did in the original series. Um, keep in mind, too. That you might think, well, the Red Ribbon Army are, you know, uh, you know, causing a disbalance in nature. Actually, they really weren't. Godzilla gets involved when there's a disruption to the natural balance of things. The Red Ribbon Army technically were doing that, but they were doing it for so long that it kind of became the balance. And nature itself wasn't in jeopardy. For, let's, the world, in terms of its balance in the natural order of things, wasn't actually in jeopardy from the Red Ribbon Army. Like, they weren't just plowing villages, or plowing, uh, like, landscapes, blittering continents, like, causing global warming, uh, the climate's changing. No, they weren't doing that. So, if you want to try to... Because otherwise, yeah, Godzilla actually would have torn through the Red Ribbon Army, no problem. But, um... And I don't think a lot of people, have this, to this day, knowledge, except for, like, the older people, like, Roshi, old old man go on Kami, know about Godzilla. The Z fighters still know about him time to time. Uh, cause he still pops up every now and then. But Godzilla probably doesn't do much for the majority of the Dragon Ball Z history. Um and um even um even when Beer like to the point where even like when Beer shows up in Super, and I'm going all the way there, yeah. Uh when Beer shows up in Super, um he, uh, or when Saul shows up, Godzilla might try to show, like, um, Godzilla, uh, Godzilla could certainly, here's the thing, when, when the problem with Godzilla, for Godzilla also is, he generally has to show up near a, it, it, whatever fighting's going on needs to be near a body of water, because if it's in mainland, there's no way he's getting there in time, because Godzilla on land is not that fast. Even when we saw him, like, Rush Ghidorah in King of the Monsters, he's not that fast. <laughs> So that's the kicker too, is that he needs to be in the mainland, uh, or he needs to be near the like the coastal cities. Otherwise, you know, wild guy. So like when Cell shows up, Godzilla can maybe sense it, but he can't get. He knows he can't get there in time, uh, unless he can. And now that being said, when Cell shows up, say on the island uh, uh, seventeen and Piccolo are fighting on, Godzilla can sense that. And the thing about it is, his power level, technically speaking is so small that I don't think anyone would really be paying that much attention to it until like Godzilla is like right near, uh, right near, right, yeah, right near them. 
And keep in mind, this would be years later. We're talking about a Godzilla who's gotten older, probably gotten stronger by storing up energy. Even though his power level technically isn't on a huge enough level to be a planet buster, the amount of power he actually exhibits in short bursts are enough to actually probably cause pause to eyes, guys, because he is basically, again, a walking nuclear reactor and bomb. So when he shows up and sells like, what the hell is that? It's like, uh, it's like oh, I can't believe it. He after all this time to show up. Uh, I don't think he's going to be enough, though. And Godzilla just roars. Just, nah, it's like, all right, then, buddy. And, you know, he, Cell fires off blast. Now, Cell's blasts, though, are going to hurt. Like, they hit Godzilla, and Godzilla goes flying back. Godzilla so just fires back an atomic breath. And, you know, he's like, what? That's not... And he's, he's even the that's not key. That's... Boom. It's like, you will not be leaving here. And it's like, come on, you tail we're going tin can. And all of a sudden, Godzilla gets a full-on point that's, like, right there. Just blast them both. Just, boom, boom. And... Even though it's not like a planetary blast, it's radiation and superheated radiation in the breath. Form. Like, this is actually starting to peel off Cell's flesh, I imagine. Just, and 18 and 16 kind of just shorts. Like, 16's done. Because the radiation so massive, it shorts out his processor and all that stuff. I think, despite the fact it wouldn't necessarily destroy his body, the amount of radiation that's being put off there would mess him up severely. Because 17 and 18 are actually cyborgs. They're mostly human. 16 is an actual android, and um, Cell is a bioengineered android, technically. And it's still, it's, it actually is, it's like, ah! and he lands a shot on Godzilla, like, stupid lizard, oh, what is, what is that? He's like, that's not key, that's radiation, uh, you, yeah. and all of a sudden, 17, Piccolo, and 18 are now just launching attacks at Cell, just boo, 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 God, he, and Cell's like, you and Godzilla, he still sees Godzilla there. He's like, yeah, you're first, and then just come me, come me, and Godzilla just fires, but just boom, just gets knocked out cold. Just uh, he's like, come on, you blaster, get up, get up, and you know, Goku's actually like, come on, Godzilla, get up, get, and he's like reaching out telepathic, get up, you gotta get up, <laughs> and Godzilla's eyes snap open, and Godzilla actually, you know. That surprisingly grabs on the cell, just, and all of a sudden you hear, then Piccolo's like, get out of here now! And about 17 and Piccolo and 18 tail, high tail, and Cell's able to get out of Godzilla's grass, but Godzilla can still use a nuclear pulse without Mothra's amp or the amp of the extra nuclear energy. We've learned that in uh, Aftershock, he can do that. Uh, it's not as strong, obviously, but you can still do it. But you get a Godzilla that's been, you know, sitting around just storing up energy. And just, boom! Just blast cells. Now, would that be enough to take out Cell? Well, it was enough to incinerate Ghidorah's wings and two of his heads pretty much in an instant. Like, steel girders were melting just by Godzilla being next to him, not alone releasing the power. I think, yeah, that's enough heat that that would seriously hurt. Like, that could kill Cell in a, in, with enough uh, usage of, usage, yeah, usages of it. Unfortunately, I don't know if Godzilla has enough energy for that, but it's enough that it really puts him in a scenario where he needs to take this lizard out. So he just puts everything he has into all the energy he has and just, boom, blast Godzilla again straight in the head. This time it really does put him down but not for good not for i think he's like critically injured but they, they get like a very small sense of being to his it's like boop and he just goes <laughs> and so he kind of like has a scar for the rest of his days but he's ultimately okay meanwhile cell is just like when it's all said and done he's just <sighs> he's not missing limbs is a thing though so he can't actually regenerate from this as well as he'd like <laughs> i was like eh, why I can't regenerate from this wising. And then Piccolo, five, Piccolo, eighteen and seventeen are there. They get another charge. That's because you got my cells. I can't, I can't regrow or regenerate from things like that. I can regrow my limbs, but it, but something like that is a bit more is a bit harder to uh, deal with. And he's got his he's got his special bean cannon ready. Seventeen, and eighteen are charging their attacks. Like, oh crap, that's got They blast him. And they kill, and they kill Cell. Like Godzilla actually is instrumental in helping kill Cell. And so, you know, Goku shows up. It's like, oh, so you're Goku, huh? It's like, uh, yeah, I'm Goku. Hi, how you doing? And 
you know, they're asking, like, well, we were, uh, the doctor did task us to kill you, but uh, given the circumstances, I'm guessing you know this guy. Yeah, it's Godzilla. He's been around for a long time. He's a great guy. Uh, it's like, isn't that right, buddy? It's like, and Godzilla's just like, <clears throat> just kind of snuffs and huffs. Um, so, <laughs> you know, it's just like, well, and so, now it's like one of those things where 17 and 18 are just like, well, what do we do now? It's like, do, well, do we have to be enemies? I mean, with Saul gone, you're technically the only ones left. And I mean, your buddy there sacrificed himself to protect you and all that. I, I mean, it's clear, and, and I hate to tell you this, Vegeta and Trunks are in, are getting some training in right now. By the time they're out, they're probably going to be way leagues stronger than any of us. Of course, I'm going to be way stronger than them when I go in, too. But still. Um, so that does beg the question, then, of what happens? Uh, it's like, well, you know, 17 and 18 kind of think it over. And then they're like, yeah, I suppose maybe we could work something else. Uh, but you gotta you gotta bring our buddy back. Well, we got the Dragon Balls for that. Um, actually, it's like, oh, and crap, Bazooks. Well, we can figure something out. That's where Dende comes in. They get Dende, Goku, and go on train. And so there you go. There's the more, probably over seven years of peace now, like seven and a half. Go, Krillin and uh, I think uh, 18 hook up. 17, you know, has his kid, gets married as well, becomes a park ranger with 16. It's all good. But now he actually does change up the history a bit. Because Goku, you know, I had to think about it long term because I had to realize as long as there's a coastal area, uh, Godzilla might get involved. <clears throat> and there was a, and there was a, that fight took place on an island. So there you go. Um, but um, with Goku being alive, yeah, Vegeta probably wouldn't go Majin because he's had Goku there all this time. Goku would still hit Super Saiyan 2. Probably wouldn't hit Super Saiyan 3, though. He'd probably be knocking on the door. Uh, when Bobbity and, uh, you know, everyone try to resurrect Boo, because Vegeta can't be controlled, they're able to take down ba Deborah, I believe, uh, without too much difficulty after Gohan you nearly know, gets turned to stone. And then Bobbity is taken down and Boo is not released, so you don't have Majin Boo there. Then you get Beerus, uh, and you would still get the Super Saiyan God thing. That's not in for, that's not in contention. I think Vegeta would be a little less hospitable. Uh, in turn, just overall, he'd be a bit more cantankerous still, but he still would probably be a lot more matured up thanks to, you know, time and passage. Um, <clears throat> uh, so, like, Godzilla shows up to maybe take on Beerus. Beerus quickly puts a snack down on Godzilla. Though. First time Godzilla legitimately just gets beaten, doesn't even get to throw a good shot in. Uh, and really, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, Godzilla would be around. He would. He might even chill out with the Z Fighters down there. Like, he's like, yeah, I like these guys. Like, maybe when Bulma's party, he's just chilling around under there, kind of just enjoying the music and all that, just taking a nap. Um, but, uh, I guess the one question you could make an argument for is could you see him in the Tournament of Power? He's not a fighter, he's just a giant monster. Uh, and even though his power, his durability is great, he'd just be too big, I think. Uh, although we had Annie Raza, and Annie Raza was probably roughly his size. But, no, and I, I think they would make the argument that Godzilla actually doesn't make any sense because he'd be a giant target. So remember what happened when your fight with Bergamo? It would be the same thing here. Good point. Uh, and then when Broly and Frieza show up, like, um, yeah, God, no, as far as I know, that took place. Well, no, that was in the Arctic, but there were also land masses, so, or Antarctica, one of the two, I can't remember where. Uh, either way, no, I don't think, and so, what if Godzilla was in the Dragon Ball Z, uh, universe? I mean, he actually would play a bit of a long, t he would play some part in it, sure. He would give Goku a better shot against King Piccolo, certainly. He would actually, I think, be a determining factor in beating Cell. Uh, but, and you can make an argument, uh, too, that because he beats Cell, and because, uh, uh, they resurrected 16, that 16 might be the 10th member, not Frieza, on the Tournament of Power team. Uh, because, actually, that would make 100% sense, because Boo's not around. So, there would be no Frieza. So, I still imagine you would get a similar scenario, because he's very logical, tactical, he'd probably be knocking people out left and right. So, I imagine he'd be knocking out people who would be knocking out the other fighters. For instance, because he's this, he's actual android, he could probably track the invisible and very and near and very small opponents of Team 4, I can't remember their names, through, like, uh, thermal 
uh, you know, microscopic vision or whatever it might be like target focusing. So that might keep Piccolo in the fight longer. Certainly. Um, he would, yeah, he'd probably be a really good opponent against like universe three as well to the point where he might you know, like notice like there's something off about the three, um, robots and the professor that would allow him to turn to any Raza. So he might actually knock them out relatively quick as well. Uh, so you could actually see a lot of the Z fighters making it farther in, thanks to 16. But that's just my opinion, ultimately. What do you think? What do you think it would be like if Godzilla were in the DBZ universe? Put it in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts. But thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. As always, if you want to review something, put it in the comments below. Let us know. We'll do a review of it at some point. And hit that, that bell if you want notifications. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you folks on Saturday. Later.